With this parsha, we are starting the fourth book of the Torah, the book of Bamidbar, the book of our story in the desert. And the, our story in the desert actually starts two books earlier when we leave Egypt and we go to receive the Torah at Har Sinai, at Mount Sinai. And that is the Chag of Shavuot that we are celebrating coming up Motzei Shabbat and Sunday, and for those of us living outside of Israel, also Monday. So, why does God give us the Torah in the desert? What is the desert? So the different commentaries discuss it in length, each one from their point of view. But the real question is understanding why God doesn't give us the Torah in Israel. If the ideal is for Jews living in Israel learning Torah, then God should have given us the Torah in Israel. But he decides to give it to us in the desert anyway. Some of the commentaries point out that a desert is no man's land so that the other nations don't come with a claim of God is coming to give the world's greatest gift, the Torah, then if, if he gives it in Israel, then the Jews are the default. What about all the other nations? It's not fair. So there is a Midrash that says that God goes around to all the different nations and offers them the Torah. And he goes and he says, would you like to accept my gift? And the Ishmaelim say, what does it say inside this this Torah of yours. God shows them the Ten Commandments and says, do not steal. And they say, do not steal? Like, how, how are we supposed to make a living? This is how we make livings. We don't, uh, we don't want this. He goes to the children of Esav and he says, how about you? Would you like to accept my Torah? And they say, what does it say in it? And he says, well, it says, don't kill, right? Basic human decency is, well, we're mercenaries. How are we supposed not to kill? We don't want to accept it. Then he comes to Bnei Israel, and Bnei Israel say, Na'aseh We will do, and only afterwards we'll listen to what's inside. But first, if you, God, you decide that you want to give us a gift, how can we say no? It's obviously something good for us, and we accept it, and we go from there. That place is a place of understanding why in the desert. So what is a desert? What does a desert symbolize? Well, when we live in a city, or we live in a field, in a forest, somewhere where we can self-sustain, then we come under the illusion of that my might did this for me, and I don't need God. It's a famous joke about a person goes, he's running late for a meeting, and he's waiting in the parking lot trying to find him. He looks up to God and he says, God, if you just give me this parking spot, you help me find a parking spot, I will, I, I will pray stronger. I will keep Shabbos. I will do everything. And just as he finishes praying, someone pulls out. He says, never mind, God, I got it. So we don't see it when, 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 we're, when we're in our natural habitat. But what's a desert? A desert is a place where without God, we're gone. There's not a lot of food, not a lot of water, not a lot of shade. Our only place is we're in God's hands. We're, 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 we're in his mercy. And we ask God for that. So God says, I'm giving you the Torah from a place of full submission, of just accepting it. And that's how we accept the Torah. We accept the Torah of we believe that God wants what's best for us. Just like a father wants what's best for his children, so does God want for his children what's best for us. And that is a very high level of acceptance. And it's not easy, and not everybody can do it. But those who are able to get to experience Judaism on a whole entire level. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach.